Hello, and welcome to the Ohio DOT trainings for its Multimodal Design Guide, or the MDG. This video is the 12th module of a 13-part training series that will span the entirety of the guide. In this video, we will focus on Chapter 11, Railroad Crossings. Rail crossings can present unique challenges to non-motorized traffic. Inadequate traffic control devices may lead to confusion about how and when it is safe to cross the tracks. This chapter provides guidance to support decision making related to the identification of appropriate traffic control devices for walkways and bikeways for at grade rail, rail crossings where traffic signals are not provided in accordance with Part 8 of the Ohio MUTCD. Designers should refer to Chapter 10, where highway traffic signals are used as a rail crossing's primary control. Additionally, crossing tracks for railroads, trolleys, streetcars, and others can pose a physical challenge as the flangeway gaps may be a tripping hazard for a person walking and may entrap wheelchair casters or a bike wheel. This guide also provides layout and designs to address these issues. It's important to remember that tracks that are not continuously within the roadway typically have independent right-of-way that supersede the highway right-of-way at a crossing and thus designers must coordinate with these owners. This chapter is intended to facilitate discussion with rail owners but the rail owners ultimately have jurisdiction over any work that occurs within their right of way. The coordination process can take an extended period of time, so it's recommended that this coordination begin as early as possible so the design team and railroad owner can determine the preferred treatment and ensure that it can be accommodated within the anticipated project schedule and contract documents. Additionally, where the preferred treatment would need additional right-of-way, it needs to be identified and resolved as early as possible to ensure the recommended treatments can be built as intended. Section 11.1 .1 focuses on accessible and geometric design for pedestrian and bicycle facilities at rail crossings. All crossing surfaces, traffic control devices, and any additional treatments provided shall meet applicable accessibility guidelines. On the left is an image summarizing the placement of traffic control devices and detectable warning surfaces to maintain the pedestrian access route and ensure accessibility. On the right, there are two images showing the preferred crossing angle to reduce a wheeled device from falling into the flangeway. Section 11.2 through 11.4 are to be used to evaluate a crossing and then use those assessments in conjunction with 11.5 to determine the appropriate traffic control devices and treatments. We'll walk through each of these sections briefly. The first evaluation discussed is site distance. 11.2 provides an equation and lookup table for the necessary site distance for perpendicular crossings of rail tracks on level ground. Where the clearing site distance does not meet these values in this table, a crossing does not provide sufficient site distance and active traffic control devices should be provided. This table incorporates the values from Table 41 in the Railroad Highway Grade Crossing Handbook Revised 2nd Edition, 2007. Section 11.3 should be used to determine if pedestrians and bicyclists can share traffic control provided for the roadway or if separate primary or supplementary traffic control devices are required. Typically, pedestrians and bicyclists may use the roadway signage and signals if the facility is parallel to the roadway and 25 feet or less from the edge of pavement. This is measured from the edge of traveled way of the roadway to the outside edge of the separated facility. Regardless of the distance, the primary control may be supplemented by treatments described in 11.5. 
In the image on the left, you'll also see considerations for two-way separated bicycle lanes. Although two-way separated bicycle lanes are always within 25 feet or less of the roadway, one direction of travel on the bike lane will be opposing the direction of the nearest roadway travel lane. This section discusses traffic control placement and gate arm design for two-way separated bike lanes to address this condition. In addition to the basic controls previously discussed, it may be desirable to provide additional traffic control devices or treatments at locations which have any of the following conditions present. Risky behavior is defined as the observation of pedestrians or bicyclists ignoring traffic control devices, bypassing traffic control devices, failing to observe approaching trains, attempting to cross in front of approaching trains, placing the individual at risk of being struck by the train, crossing through a stop train by stepping between cars or rolling under a car, or waiting too close to crossing trains. Locations where the history of crashes have the potential to be corrected by engineering measures, locations with high pedestrian and bicycle volumes that are relative to the surrounding population and land uses, and in areas designated as quiet zones where trains may not sound their horn when approaching a crossing. In these locations, additional treatment should be considered to mitigate the increased risk caused by the absence of a horn. Where sidewalks or shared use paths are more than 25 feet from the roadway, the chart and treatment descriptions in 11.5 can be used to determine the appropriate traffic control devices based on train speed, assessments covered in earlier sections, and the number of tracks present. This section also discusses the layout for design for signing and marking, flashing light signals, automatic gates, and supplemental treatments including Z crossings, pedestrian swing gates, channelization, and supplemental illumination. Thank you for watching this video covering Chapter 11 of the MDG. For other chapters, please see the additional videos in this series.